Okay, let's talk a bit about free body diagrams again. If you recall in the previous sections, I don't recall exactly which one, um, we, in the two-dimensional free body diagram discussion in the earlier videos, we said that, well, you've got, you've got some structure and you've got some applied forces, right? And then in order for this structure to not um, accelerate, you've got some kind of constraints, right? Maybe you've got a pin connection there and um, you've got maybe a, just a s surface there and so, and whatever. You've got these, these support reactions that are resisting the applied force and these applied and reactive forces or supports these two together allow for equilibrium. Okay? Well, that's in two dimensions. In the, it's exactly the same in three dimensions. We have these applied and, and support reactions. And we need to know how to replace the support reactions with forces. <clears throat> so let's look at some diagrams here. So this is modeling the action of forces in three-dimensional analysis. Okay, so let's look in this column. It says the type of contact and force origin. So here we have a member in contact with a smooth surface. So remember in two dimensions, we just simply said, okay, there's the member and there's the smooth surface. So it's in contact with a smooth surface. And because it could, because this support, this um, the surface over here couldn't resist motion in the horizontal then we didn't replace it with a horizontal force but it can resist motion in the vertical so we would replace it we would replace this with a vertical normal force there which is perpendicular to that surface similarly here in three dimensions x y z and because it's smooth we replace the floor the surface with a normal force okay Pretty straightforward. If you've got a rough surface, similar to there, but a rough surface, you need to include a tangent force to the surface, which is our friction force. Okay, so frictional fr uh, surface with friction, you apply a normal and a tangent force. Three, a roller or wheel support with lateral constraint. So this wheel can move along this, um, what is it called? It's a guide. This is a guide. Right? So it, it's constrained to move along this guide. So there's no, as you can see, if you, repl if you remove that guide uh, and you replace it with a force, there's no, there's no force in the x direction. So there's no resistance in the x, but there is a resistance in the y direction, okay, called P. So that's a lateral force P exerted by the guide on the wheel and then of course it can't move in the down this object can't move down so this guide is resisting it so the force is up okay so what I want to remind you about these is that these forces don't necessarily exist but they are again potential forces that could exist if the applied forces um, cause them to exist if you if you understand what I'm saying okay but we need to include them in our diagram and in our equations all we'll find is that oh wait in this specific case this force is zero or that moment is zero okay ball and socket joint this can rotate around there but it can't move up and down and in the x yeah, it can't move in the X, Y, and Z directions, but it does allow for rotation. So we remove that ball and socket, and we replace it with the three forces, R, X, R, Y, R, Z. So it can pivot. It's free to pivot about the center. Okay, what about five? Fixed connection. There, it's exactly the same as this, but it's fixed. So not only does this 
fixed connection, which is embedded or a welded connection, resist uh, translational motion, Rx, Ry, and Rz, but it also resists um, ro uh, rotation. So it resists moments. So you need to include that in there. Okay. Then, a thrust bearing support. So if you can see uh, on this side, this is the diameter is larger than on that side. So if you apply a force, an applied force on on this um, member over here in that direction, this bearing will resist it from moving in that direction. So we have to include this resisting reaction force, Ry. And then, if you try to rotate this member about the z-axis, uh, this, this bearing will resist it. So we need to include a moment about the z-axis that resists it. And if you try to rotate it about the x-axis, it will resist. So you have to include a mx there as well. And it resists motion in the x and motion in the z. So rx, ry, rz, and then the two moments. Okay. So when we're doing a problem and we have these supports, we replace them as shown in this table.